All right, everyone, welcome back. My name is Alex, and today I'm going to talk about a slightly different topic uh, than trading, although it's going to hook into trading um, as I go along. So if you're a trader and you want to know how to help out in your trading scheme, stick around. This could be interesting for you. Uh, for the rest of you, uh, this is a good general topic on uh, basically a big part of the PVE portion of the game and why I want to go over it. So the topic today is all about standings and agent missions. Particularly for those of you who start to come outside of the high sec empire space and you go into low sec and you go into null sec. And a lot of players, when they go into low sec, and, and particularly null sec, they completely forget about agents at that point. Um, one of the reasons is, is that, frankly, there's a lot of activities that one can do, particularly if you're in a corporation, that are much more profitable in null sec and in low sec uh, than running agent missions. So it tends to get a little bit pushed to the wayside a little bit. That may not be a good idea. Or at least don't ignore it wholesale. And this ties into another topic. And it's something that I've been guilty of. And it's also something that I think can really change your experience in EVE Online. This is particularly true if you're either a brand new player to EVE Online or if you're actually a very grizzled long-term veteran on EVE Online. Okay. And those, and again, that is standings and agent missions. Why are they important? First of all, why do agent missions? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, when you start to run missions for a particular entity in the EVE Online, and namely a particular corporation, at first, with a few exceptions, you're at the very bottom of the ladder in that company. You start with level one agents, then you go to level two, and then onwards and upwards. And essentially, it's a euphemism of the corporate ladder how much the corporation likes you and how much they open up to you as you go up the ladder and you get to higher level agents you get more money for your missions but more importantly you get loyalty points for your missions which is a secondary currency and tends to be the portion that's far more valuable than the actual money itself. Now, when you run missions for a corporation, as you become more trusted by that corporation, as you do more tasks for that corporation, that also reflects on the faction that that corporation is in. You do that long enough, plus or minus around 16 missions, 16 minutes, plus or minus a few. Over time, you're going to actually get an important storyline mission. And what that does is that not only does it change the factions for between you and the company, it will change the factions between you and that empire or that uh, sovereign entity that that corporation is a part of. And that is when you really start to steer your character into a certain direction in EVE Online. Okay? So if you open up your character sheet, you're going to see a tab here called Interactions. It's next to your character tab. Yeah, character tab, you, go, you have your home station, your implants, jump clothes, all that good stuff. But the next tab over, you're going to see corporations, uh, agents, and factions under the Interactions tab. And this is where you manage your standings. This is how the other empires, corporations, and everyone else in EVE Online, at least as far as the PVE side, the NPC side, this is how they view you, okay? And of course, when you start your character, you're essentially neutral. You have a little bit positive standings with your 
data faction that you start with. So in this character's case, uh, Galente, she's uh, originally from the Galente Federation. Uh, you'll have slightly negative standings with the enemies of the, of your home faction, slightly negative. So Kaldari State, in my case. Uh, you also have uh, some positive standings with the allies of your home faction. So Minmatar Republic to the Galente Federation. They are allies, essentially. Same with the Kaldari and the Amar Empire. So a lot of people, when they come into EVE Online, the first thing they do is they start running the missions for the Navy of the respective empires. So if I open the Corporations tab, you're going to see, I yes, I spent a lot of time playing with the Federation Navy. I got a 6.47. And as I did so, of course, I got more loyalty points and I climbed up the ladder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I never took it so far that I damaged my standings with the other main factions. Okay? Because, again, I fell into that portion that mindset that I don't want to lose access to any particular portion of even line because if you take your standing high enough with your faction that you're aligned with there are negative consequences with the opposing faction so for example with the Galante Federation on the faction side here in the factions tab okay I'm at a 3.47 with the Kaldari State, I'm at a negative point nine eight uh, because I also did faction warfare with this character. So of course the Kaldari State really doesn't like me because I've shot up their ships and blew up their outposts. So they're not on the best of terms with me, at least with this character. So the key thing is is that if an opposing faction, if their alignment drops below five. If you go below negative five with that particular faction, they're going to attack you on site when they when you go into their space. So if I drop below negative five, and I go into Kaldar State, they're going to start shooting at me in high sec. Okay, low sec. Again, uh, the turrets are actually not going to shoot at you, but once you go into high sec, it's almost being the same as uh, being criminally flagged. Okay. Or as if you were in faction warfare, if you're like a member of the Galente Federation faction warfare, and you go into Caldari space, or you go into a Mars space, you know, you're going to be attacked on site once you get into high sec. Okay. Now, the key thing is, is that when you align to a faction, you're going to get certain benefits as you align yourself more and more to that faction. Okay. So this is the main point I want to, to hammer across at first. But for those of you who are starting the game the first time, or for those grizzled veterans, don't be afraid to really push your alignment into one faction or another and role play into that. So many people, I believe, are afraid to role play their characters. They're afraid to make choices that they may feel will confine their character along a certain avenue, and they're afraid to come out of it. Okay? First of all, there are no permanent choices. You're not ever going to get to the point where you're permanently cut off because even if you're minus 10 to the Kaldari state, you can still run level 1 agents. Now, you will not be able to run them in high sec, but you can run level 1 agents in low sec. And if you're willing to put in the time and the effort and make up to them and you know, tell them how sorry you were and you know, buy them flowers or whatever you will start to actually repair your standing with that faction and the corresponding opposing factions, in this case of the Galente Federation, who you may have been best buddies with, will start to, to decline. Okay. But again, going back to role playing, with this particular character, Mei Sui, I made the decision quite a while ago that I want her aligned to the Serpentis Corporation which is a pirate corporation. So they're enemies to all four empire factions. Some not as much as the others. But essentially, I'm going to not be going into high sec uh, 
for much longer as my factions continue to degrade with the um, main empires and as I start to build up with the pirate entities. Now, I mentioned what does it mean for a trader? What does it mean for, for you? What are the benefits of really aligning yourself to faction outside of being able to take level four agents and maybe in a few cases level five agents okay well there's more than than that okay so as i mentioned i am aligning myself uh, to the serpentus so if i click on here okay these are the missions that i ran with the serpentus you can see the faction gain over here nice little dot pot and one of the things that you get of course you get access to all their agents if there's a special mission involved, you'll get access to that. If there's a spe special mission or, or epic arc. But it's these two over here that you want to take a look at. Okay. The reprocessing tax, if you get your standings high enough with the corporation, which I believe is getting past two-thirds or 6.67, okay, all the refining tax and reprocessing tax goes away. So if you bring in uh, minerals, ores, or you're melting down uh, equipment, salvaging it, you will have perfect refining tax, which is about zero, when you get above 6.67. Now, it may not seem like a lot, but if you do it a lot, it's gonna add up pretty quickly over the medium to long term. Okay, and more importantly, for a trader, going back to trading, there's a reduction in the broker's fee. So, as a trader, you put up orders to buy and sell, and that is your lifeblood. And every time you do, there are taxes taken out of it, which affects your bottom line. And we're not here to be friends, we're here for business. Okay, so, as a trader, who is willing to role play that character, was willing to really invest in a, a faction, a corporation and a faction, to the point that uh, you may even be able to alienate yourself from some of the other factions. Okay. This will significantly reduce your broker's fee uh, for every single order that you make. And remember, when you make an order, whether it's to buy something or sell something, there's always a broker fee involved. Yep. So if I stay here and, you know, just for efficiency sake here, I'm going to go over the fitting. Um, let's just say we take this, this out over here. I'm sorry, put this over here. And let's just say we're going to willing to sell it. I'm not actually going to sell it, but I just want to make the point here. Okay. Let's say we sell this for 1 million. Okay. So down here, you see the broker's fee and you see the sales tax, okay? The sales tax, when you sell something, is only paid if you actually sell it, okay? That's only if the sale triggers. If you put up something on the market and it just sits there, no one buys it, or you cancel the order, you actually don't pay this portion. You don't pay the sales tax. Sales tax only triggers if you put the sale. However, the broker's fee is always triggered whether you buy, put up a buy order or you put up a sell order. Okay, that comes out every single time whether you make the buy or the sale or not. Okay. So while percentage-wise the sales tax is a bigger portion, that's only triggered on one side of the trade. Okay, but the broker's fee is always triggered. So if I go over here and I put my skills list and I go to trade, you want to reduce your taxes as much as possible because you're also gonna be making a lot of trades. All right. Now when it comes to this sales tax, there really is only one thing you can do to reduce the sales tax and that is the accounting skill. So each level of accounting will reduce your sales tax by 11% from the starting sales tax of 8%. Okay, so if you start trading and you didn't train accounting at all, 
your sales tax is going to be 8%. Okay. Which, okay, if you're selling smaller things, ammunition, frigates, tech one stuff like that, it's not too big a deal. But if you start going up to things like tech two, up into expensive modules, up into structures, that is going to be enormous. Okay, so you want to cut that down as much as you want. Actually, as much as you can. So, I of course, I trained it all the way to the top. So, and what that does, it changes it from 8% to 3.6%. This is the lowest you can go. This is maxing out account, okay? But again, as I mentioned, this only triggers if you make a sale. Broker's fee always triggers, okay? And this actually goes back into standings. So when it comes to the broker's fee, even though it is smaller, because it triggers far more than the sales tax, okay, this is something you want to really get down as much as you can. And you can get it down a lot. But again, that's where standings come into play. Now, before you really start aligning yourself to a faction and trying to squish it down as much as you, as much as you can, Again, go back to the trade, and you're going to get some easy pickups first to really reduce the brokerage fees, and that's broker relations. So brokerage relations take, subtracts a 0.3% from the cost associated to make an order in a non-player station. Again, this is for all non-player stations. So if you're in the case of Citadel, Fortazar, or something like that, it's going to be a different story. Okay, but this is for NPC stations, which is what I use and what, what the majority of people use because of course Jita, Amar, the major trade hubs, they're all NPC stations as well. Well if you go to broker relations, um, it starts at 3% of your order. And this comes out every single time, 3% of the total volume. Each level of broker relations, and this is not a, um, a, high, uh, a difficult skill to train. You can train this up fairly quick. But you can get this down to, I believe, is around 1.65. I'm going off memory here. That may not be entirely correct. But you can get that down from 3% down to about 1.65. So, all right, 1.65. That's good. Can we get it smaller? And I think I just made a mistake here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Did I sell my, uh, I made the broker's fee. I didn't sell it. <laughs> uh, let's look at my trade window here. Uh, oh, geez. Yeah, expanded cargo hold. There it is. <laughs> oh well, I'll I'll cancel that order here when I can, which will be in you know, four minutes ten seconds. Hopefully nobody buys it. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Anyways, going back to the video. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Okay. Anyways, going back to the video here. You can get down to one point six five on the on the broker suite. Can you get that even lower yes and it's all about standings so as you increase the standings with the corporation you run missions for and the faction that's associated with you can take your brokerage fee i believe all the way down to one percent now it doesn't seem like 0.65 percent is a lot but when you multiply that across every single order that you're ever going to make uh, it adds up fairly quickly so in the end, if you run missions for a corporation, a faction, and you use their stations to uh, set up your orders, to put your trade stations in, you can become extremely efficient with your orders and minimizing the taxes and the amount of uh, brokerage fees you need to pay uh, when you do that. Okay? Now, going back to standings here. And so I'll get my cargo hold back here in just a moment. So going back here. 
So again, as these standings go up, I say with the Serpentis, or in this case, the Antakis Corporation, uh, the opposing faction goes down. How do you know who's an opposing faction or not? That's a good question. So let's open up Serpentis Corporation. And we're going to go to the standings tab here. Every single corporate entity in EVE Online has this tab. Every single faction has this tab on, um, in EVE Online. So we're going to click Serpentis. And if you look at these arrows here, you're going to see which direction it goes into. So when you see the arrows pointing to the left, that is from left, uh, that's from right to left. So this is how the Serpentis Corporation views me. It's a very good solid 8.4. But the Serpentis faction as a whole does not view me very well, although it is positive at only a 0 0.28. So let's click on Serpentis. And now we're at the faction level. We're at the higher level. And again, we're going to click the standing step. And here you get a big laundry list of relative standings. And this is the important bit. This is where we're going to kind of go through things. Now, of course, up here at the top, this is from Serpentis Corporation to your character. Okay, but if you look down here, you're going to see a whole bunch of negatives and positives. All right, this is how you can evaluate how your character is going to be viewed by the other entities in EVE Online. Okay, so because I run with Serpentis, that's my main corporation that I, that I work with, you're going to see who their friends are and who their enemies are. So the enemies are pretty darn clear. Galante Federation minus nine. That is the most negative number you can have on alignment, which makes sense. The Serpentis is the direct pirate and enemy of the Galante Federation. So, of course, they absolutely despise each other. And it's in both directions. So you can see here the arrows pointing to the left. That's Galante Federation to Serpentis is minus nine. So Galante Federation hates Serpentis. And the feeling is mutual. So this one here is going from left to right from Serpentis to the Galantic Federation. It's minus nine as well. So that hatred is very mutual. <laughs> but if you go down here, you see that it's not really that, uh, that straightforward with a lot of the other entities. So take, for example, the Kaldari State. So if I run missions for the Serpentis Corporation, I see here that the Kaldari state still is at a negative one to Serpentis, but that's very minor. You know, I think it's because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So even though we're on the other side of the law here, the Kaldari state kind of eh, not happy that, that you're a pirate, but we'll let it go. It's no, no problem. All right. As long as you keep blowing up the Galente, who's our enemies, <laughs> uh, we, we won't ding you that hard. They'll ding you, but they won't ding you that hard. Well, on the other hand, the Serpentis is completely neutral to the Caldari State. They are 0, 0.0. They can, you know, they're not positive toward the Caldari State. They're not negative to the Caldari State. On the other hand, though, the Kaned, Kaned Kingdom, which is an Amar space, couldn't care less about the Serpentis. But apparently the Serpentis, it is a minus two to Kaned Kingdom. So if you ran missions for the Khanad Kingdom, you will actually slightly lower your standings with the Serpentis. Okay. Minmatar Republic, again, hate each other. Not exactly minus nine, but a minus seven and minus six. That's a, still a pretty good level of hatred. So if you run missions for Serpentis, the rate that your standings is, is going to drop is um, a factor uh, with this uh, minus seven. So basically it's like a multiple. It de determines how fast you drop your your uh, standing with that faction. Servant, servant Sisters of Eve. Again, all goody two-shoes. We're on the wrong side of law. We give out drugs and brain boosters and, and do all sorts of nefarious things. So they absolutely despise us. Minus seven. We're going to drop our standing with them fairly quick. Us, uh, we're not happy with... S Serpent, uh, Servant Sisters of Eve, Little Angels, which we despise, minus three. So if we run uh, missions for the Servant Sisters of Eve, yes, we're going to drop our faction standing with Serpentis, but not n at the same rate 
that our faction standing with the Serpent Sisters of Eve is going to drop when we run missions for the Serpentis. Okay, so this is the easy way to tell who's your enemies, but you can also tell who your friends are. So I'm running missions for the Serpentis. Is the Serpentis alone? No, they're not. So who are the main friends of the Serpentis? Namely, two. The Angel Cartel and the Intaki Syndicate, which is called the Syndicate out down here at the bottom. Very good positive standing. So Angel Cartel, we know lore-wise, they're kind of the benefactors and protectors of the Serpentis Corporation. Very strong connections between these two entities that practically work together. So it's a positive eight on both sides. So if I run missions for Serpentis, I'm also going to raise my standing with the Angel Cartel at a pretty fast rate, as well as raising my standings with the Serpentis and vice versa. If I run eight uh, missions for the Angel Cartel, I'm going to raise my standings with the Serpentis at a pretty high rate. Actually, I think about the even rate, about the same rate. Okay. Now with the Syndicate, uh, it's not exactly uh, even, but still quite strong. So if I run missions for the Syndicate, I'll increase my standing with the Serpentis. And it's actually at a seven. That's a, they, the, the Syndicate really likes the Serpentis. You know, the trade in illegal boosters and illegal goods, you know, things like that, that's the Syndicate's modus operandi. So they really kind of look up to the Serpentis. Serpentis don't look up as much to the, to the Syndicate, although they still have a very positive view at a positive five. So if I run Agents for the Serpentis, how much is it going to be viewed by the Syndicate? Still positive, but maybe not, you know, not as much, but still quite, quite a bit. So things are actually in power blocks here. So if I do faction missions for the Serpentis, I will be in a, in a power block that includes the Serpentis, the Angel Cartel, and the Intaki Syndicate. That's the pirate power block, okay, that are all aligned to each other. Which is interesting because it's the mirror image of the Empire pirate, um, power block. So Galente, Minmatar, Serpentis and Taki Syndicate, which is Galente ish, and Angel Cartel, which is Minmatar. Interestingly enough, the opposing pirate block, which is the Gurustas, um, the Blood Raiders, uh, let's see where are they are, the Blood Raider Company, and Sancho's Nation. They are negative towards us. Now, they're not highly negative towards us, but they are still negative, which means as we run missions for the Serpentis or the Angel Cartel or the Intaki Syndicate, our corresponding standings with the opposing pirate block, although they're not directly opposed because these are not very severe. These are like minus ones. They'll drop slightly. They are pirates. You know, we are pirates. So there's, you know, that pirate love put together. But they, they still don't like each other because the Gurustas is aligned to Kaldari. The Blood Raiders and such nations are aligned to Amar. They're the inverse of their empires. So in the pirate NPC pirate world of EVE Online, there are two main pirate blocks. Blood Raiders, Sancho's Nation, Gurustas. And the other pirate block, again, Angel Cartel, Serpentis, and Taki Syndicate. So if you align yourself with one entity, in case, in my case, the Serpentis Corporation, I can also run missions for the Angel Cartel and the Intaki Syndicate. That's why you see me out here now in the Syndicate space. And they're all reinforcing. So recently, I ran um, a faction mission for the uh, Intaki Syndicate. And what you see is if I go to the syndicate, again, I'm not very, very high. But I got a plus one nine for that uh, faction mission, and that raised my standing. Also, Serpentis, 
raised my standing and I think I just sold my <laughs> expanded cargo hold. <sighs> That's what I get. Also, if I go to Angel Cartel, I've also uh, changed the standing there. So you'll see the reason it says derived modification. Derived modifications mean, okay, you ran a mission. In my case, I ran a mission for the Antaki Syndicate. So I completed this mission here, Materials for War. Because this um, standing, increased the standing there, there's a derived modification, actually a fairly big one for Serpentis, so point, point 0.10. This is point 0.19 for Angel Cartel. I mean, uh, for the syndicate, sorry. And for the Angel Cartel, 0 0.079. So you can run missions for all three of these factions, and they'll all be mutually reinforcing. So if you get a faction mission for the syndicate, which I ran, it also helps my faction standing with the Serpentis, and it also helps my faction standing with the Angel Cartel, and vice versa. I'm also running missions for the Angel Cartel, and also running missions for the Serpentis, which correspondingly raise my faction standings with the other two members of our power block. Okay. On the other hand, of course, if I go to Galante Federation, this drop down, derived modification. And let's see here. If I go to, uh, actually, go to Syndicate. This is actually who I ran the, the, um, the mission for. Who else uh, doesn't really like the Syndicate? Well, no one has this severe hatred like they have for the Serpentos and the Angel Cartel. Uh, but Mordu's Command Legion. Okay, they really don't like the, the Syndicate. So if I go to, let's see, are they here? Yeah. Yeah, 0 0.098, that really dropped down. Well, if I go to, let's see, who's fairly benign? Amar Empire. If I see the Amar, uh, it actually didn't change at all. Uh, let's see here, Amatar Mandate, 0 0.04. Okay, so a slight slight decreases. Again, if it was like minus nine, like I did with Serpentis, you'll see it drop much quicker. Okay, so that's a quick uh, primer on standings, what to look at, how to align your character, uh, and who you want to join. So the best way to think of this is just overall, how do you want to roleplay your character? Who do you want to be aligned with? Okay, again, this is not assuming you're part of a player corporation or null sec alliance this is really more for solo players or, or small corporations or um alts you know that you want to work with but as a but you get benefits for using this the stations you can drop your brokerage fees down you can drop your refining tax down to almost zero and if you're an industrialist if you're a trader that is actually a big thing over time it's it's in small slices <laughs> that uh, you're going to uh, see that difference so that being said we're actually going to exit the station here here so i'm going to take this uh, distribution mission and we're going to actually it's right here in the same system perfect so i'm going to accept close Jump in here again. Distribution missions probably the fastest to, to changing standings. They pay the lowest, but they're the fastest in in completion time. So you can actually crank up your your factions fairly quickly, or change them relative to the other types. And I'm going to dock at the other station because it's actually right here in the same system with me. So. Should you align yourself with the faction Eva line? I, I simply recommend it. Build a story around your character. Okay, like in my case, member of the Serpentis, I'm an agent of the Serpentis, um, and their allies, the Angel Cartel and the Antaki Syndicate. Yeah, I don't blow up Angel Rats, I don't blow up Serpentis Rats, and I really play into that, and you can really craft a character, if you will, that is unique to you in Eva line, rather than being a jack of all trades.
Okay. That being said, I completed the mission. Very, very easy to hit complete. You don't have to take out all the cargo hold this time. You used to, but not anymore. So now you see these faction uh, standing changes. So I click here. It will actually take you straight to your screen. Now when I do this for the corporation, it does not change the faction standing. It does change your corporate standing. And it's just the corporation. So the same rationale that I put in with factions does not apply to corporations. The, the corporations are aligned to the faction that they're part of. It's not like corporations have direct hatred for each other. It depends on their faction. Okay. So in Taki Syndicate here, you know, made another mission, completed the mission, and I get 0 0.02 again, not massive standing jumps. But each time I do, my reprocessing tax goes down in their stations, my brokerage fees calm down, and then I can set up my orders, I can reprocess my minerals in those stations and get a competitive advantage to people who do not align themselves with a particular faction. Now this of course will limit you in where you trade. Okay, so in my case, I'm trading off Serpenta stations, that's why I'm in Curse, but I can also trade off Intaki stations, in Syndicate, um, and Angel Cartel stations. And that is kind of where I set up my business. That's who I'm a part of. That's who I'm going to, to work for. And at some point, when I get my factions high enough with the with the uh, pirate block, Angel Cartel, Serpentis, and Taki Syndicate, and low enough <laughs> with the Empire, then Maysui will be out here permanently. And I think that's neat. It gives a little more challenge to the game. You have to think differently. You have to play differently. Okay, I no longer have access to a high sec space. How do I get things out to low sec? Do I use contracts? Do I use an alt? Do I try and procure as much as I can out here? And that is going to lead to a different topic, which I think I'll make uh, another video on. Back in the day, I created a video called uh, the low sec challenge. And basically, as a little preview, uh, the rationale was you go out to low sec and you never go back into high sec and you try and procure and develop things strictly with what you have on site in low sec. Same in null sec. Can that be done today? I believe it still can, but it's different because amazingly because of the mining changes that happened a few years ago. Okay, it's not as straightforward as it used to be. Okay, but if you align your standings, as, as I mentioned today, you may be able to have to do that. And Eve becomes a little bit more interesting, a little more challenging, a little more unique. You're not everything to everyone. Now, you're special. You have special access. You have a special advantage with the empire of the faction that you align yourself with. Who knows? It's time to stir things up. Try something different. Why not? You can always repair your standings later on. But knowing how standings interact is very important if you're truly going to live in New Eden. Anyways, uh, that's my video for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked my little snafu with, <laughs> with my demonstration. I now have to go buy a new expanded cargo hold. Um, but, hey, that's, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> Someone got a cheap cargo hold. Uh, but, anyways, I hope you enjoy it. I'll talk to everyone soon. Uh, have fun with Eve and... Happy trading. Take care.